Hello and welcome back to the Rough Mix Podcast, episode 12. Today, we've got myself, Trunks, we've got Jordan, Coach Koopa, and we've got Vic, and we've got Eli, Hooligan Beats. So today's episode, we're going to get straight into it. Uh, we are going to be discussing why we chose music as our career path and as our future and for our lives, pretty much. So I think we'll start from oldest to youngest. We'll start with uh, Pops, 30, 34 years old, 36 now, 34, something like that. Um, Go ahead, Vic. All right, I'm 23. So, um, uh, so I'm just gonna give like a brief how it started very quick. So, I started playing basketball in high school at a local YMCA. Made some friends there. One of them was a rapper, and I was like, I can rap. Let me do this. And I did it. Like literally, the first session, I didn't spit anything. I was like, yo, like I heard him, and I was like, who's this? And he's like, this is me. I was like, no, nah. like for real. I was like, who's this? He's like, yeah, this is me. And I was like, all right, like, like, let me write down something like better than like, so then I didn't do it. Then like I did it a few times, like I never was really like feeling it. And then like one time they made a beat in front of me and I was like, oh, that, that was like fucking sick. And then like, we just kept on doing it. We kept on like kind of messing around with the beats. And then like his laptop got stolen. So I was like, there goes the producer, like, cause he had everything. So then like, I, I was like, I can, I can do it. Like, like I could try it out. Let's see. I bought FL and like I started making beats and like of course like in the beginning it's not good but like like I felt like deeply obsessed and like I guess because like I was really passionate about it but like I was obsessed with it like I wanted it to be good like it was just like it was just something I was watching like every single video you can think of like all that type of stuff and then like I finally recorded myself on FL studio and then like I had no idea what, like an EQ or any of that stuff was like I started messing with it and I was like yo like this is this is really where it's at like this is fucking sick and then like I started recording like all my homies on like our beats that we would make and like we would just do it for fun and like I started getting really into that like started doing some crazy stuff and then like I was like damn like this is this is where it's at right here so I used to do that on the side and I used to go to school for like I was going to school for other stuff and then, like, I finally was just like, you know what? Like, I'm going to go to school for for this stuff because, like, I'm pretty decent at it. Like, you know, and, like, this is what I like to do. And, like, this is what I'm doing all the time. I might as well do it. And, like, like, how I see it and, like, what I could do. Like, sure, like, I can always produce, record people. It'll always be a thing. But, like, you can always do more, especially nowadays with like, the internet. Like, we can be working on, like, internet jobs. And, like, there's just, like, a lot of stuff you can do now. So it's like I got into it and it's like my ultimate goal, of course, would be to like be doing this type of stuff and not having to work anything else and just like be set. Or like, of course, everybody's like win like a Grammy. Like who doesn't want a Grammy? I want a Grammy. And like just all that type of stuff. But like in general, just to like be okay with life and like 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 money wise and like not have to worry. I don't even care if I'm like I'm rich or not, but as long as I don't have to worry like struggle doing this like that's a win that's a win in my eyes so that's what i'm trying and slowly but surely we're getting there and you know you gotta enjoy the process don't focus on the journey don't focus on the prize enjoy the journey that's how it goes yeah. that was very good vic very heart touching you know you're melting a lot of people's hearts out there with that story you just said um all right jordan since since Eli's, oh, I lied. Eli is back. Sorry, I just had to, I had to get adjusted. I have my cat on my lap, so. Good. Go ahead, man. Um, well, I've pretty much, excuse me, I've pretty much been around music um, my whole life, from what I can remember. Uh, one of the first albums I remember was like uh, American Idiot by Green Day. I remember like listening to that and being like, you know, like, well, this is crazy. And, um, you know, I didn't know I was go into music as I got older, but I was like, was drawn to it. You know, like Vic said, like when you hear it, you're just like, yo, this is like crazy. The first time you hear some certain stuff and it just catches your ear. Um, but the first time I made something, I was like 10 or 11 or 12 maybe. And I had my mom's laptop on GarageBand and I like made some pretty quick. Like I had never used it before and I made some pretty quick and it, like, you know, it was probably trash it's probably just like a bunch of sounds but but i was like you know this is like this is sick like it's and it wasn't that hard and all i needed was a laptop so i got into that um i bought an mpk not mpc but an mpk 
off of my friend's brother for like 80 bucks. He, that shit, it was, it was a steal, honestly, for it's the big one. I got that for like 80 bucks. Um, and I got FL. Uh, I bought it. Shout out, shout out to FL. You know, I had to cop it one time, but, um, yeah, I started doing that. And then, uh, from there, it's been, kind of history just making making beats and then getting more into engineering and realizing i guess like uh like you know beats are cool and and you know like if you're really good at it and if you're if you're really creative like you know jordan can make like a thousand loops a day i can't do that um but if you're able to do that and you can focus on that and that's that's one thing um but like we've talked about i think and jordan already knows how to do it because he's worked some of our sessions with us in the house and like he got he has um what is it? What the pre one? What's that? What's that one called? Studio One. Um, he has that. So he's done some like mixing already, but like we'll probably talk about it, and like we probably already have talked about it. it's good to be both sides. And that's what I realized. So that's why I went to um, SAE where I met all the boys and uh, that side of the engineering side of it. But um, what's that? I thought someone was about to walk in. Um, yeah, I've kind of always been around music in the family and everywhere we went when we'd go to like parties and stuff, there was always music, like live music being played and um, just been around a lot of en- not engineers, musicians most of my life. So I think I was always drawn to it. I just didn't know where I would fit in and fat, fat, fit. I fit in in the back, in the back, producing engineering, chilling in the cut. Um, yeah. Dang, that's it. That's all you got. Sorry, it wasn't like a a movie. Sorry, it wasn't like a, a '90s New York movie with Vic coming up out the the slums. Yo, Cipher in the park. I could just see him like yo at the skate park. <laughs> What's up, punk? They come up on him, break yourself. Yeah, yo. Vic would spaz on those kids though. <laughs> Pretty accurate. Swing the scooter. <laughs> all right, Jordan. We got the Virginia boy, the Virginia native. Right here, Southern Comfort. You fucking know it. Um, for me, coming out with music, I never really listened to music like at all. I would just hear stuff like my mom or my dad. My dad played like heavy metal, like ACDC, like Metallica, like Led Zeppelin in the car. And I just didn't care about it. Like it really wasn't my thing. And then my mom would play like really like super like foreign music like from like Norway and like Sweden and like Europe and then like play Adele and like Coldplay and just like random stuff so but I never like got into anything like I never listened to music on my own like all the way up until like junior year of high school and then uh the friends I made there because I moved around a lot um so I was like I went from Virginia moved to the South Carolina, North Carolina, then came back to Virginia my junior year of high school. And when I made friends there, like they were all into hip hop, like super heavy. So they were like putting me on the stuff. I was like, all right, let me actually like start listening to stuff. And, uh, and yeah, I just got like hella into like pretty much everyone, everyone on like that 2010, 2009, like 2011, maybe XXL list, like just started listening to everyone. So like, uh, Definitely was a big fan of like Wiz Khalifa, Mac Miller, uh, ASAP Rocky. And I just thought like, uh, like the music itself was hella cool. And then I got into senior year of high school and I found uh, an artist named Lil Peep. And I was like still just listening, like vibing. Like I was like hella fucking with his music. Like I've never heard anything like that. So I was just like obsessed with that kind of music. And then... I don't know. I always thought like, oh, like it'd be really cool if I made something like that. Like if I made like beats or instrumentals, like I didn't know what they were called at the time. Um, But yeah, I just thought it would be like really cool if I made something like that. So I looked up to like all the producers who made like a step Rocky who is Khalifa stuff like Lex Luger, Big Head, Smokestack, all them. And I just started Googling like how to make beats because no one like no one around me made beats like ever. Like I didn't have any friends that made beats like rapped or anything. So I was just like, let me try this out. And um, and so, yeah, I kind of like dabbled in it in high school. Didn't like like I'd say the hardest part for me was like actually learning FL Studio. And like I didn't want to do that. Like I just wanted to be able to express my ideas. So that was like a huge like test of patience and dis- uh, discipline. And 
So from high school, wasn't really touching up on it. I had FL Studio downloaded. Then uh, I moved to Florida and like I partied like all summer, like the summer right after graduation. And I was just going crazy down there. And then when it hit the fall, uh, like I had to find a job out there and like I moved to Florida for school. But then I realized like everything at school, I just didn't want to do. So I wasn't going to school. Uh, I got a construction job and like there it's like I'm the youngest one there. Everybody's like in their 20s and 30s and like working hella hard, like in the heat and everything. And I'm like, it like scared me that that could become like my life. And so I was just like, all right, let me find something I like and that I can be good at. And like and so like I picked up beats again and just started going like crazy on that. And like like 12 hours a day, like at least 12 hours a day, like come home from the job, like barely eat make beats all night until I had like two hours of sleep, four hours of sleep to wake up and then go back to the construction site. So, cause like, I was like, I had this fear, like, you know, I'm not going to school, so I got to work twice as hard as people going to school to like be able to make it anywhere. So yeah, I just like got hella into making music then, uh, got, got pretty good at it, moved to California. And then, yeah. I found people who actually took it seriously because even in Florida, like no one really took it seriously, like the part I was in. So, yeah, I just still making beats to this day. It's been like a little over two years now. So, yeah, see where it takes us. Very good, Jordan. Very good, Jordan. Very heartfelt. Very heartfelt. You got to say it twice to make it mean more. So, Jordan and Eli and Vic have all shared their stories. Now it's up to me. And so for me, it starts off when I was, I was probably seven or eight. Me and my brother used to make beats like off our, off like, you know, like pen and, and like your hands, you're just like hitting the table and you're just, it was like real, like, oh, like just ghetto beats that we used to just make. Like we never rapped. We just always like beatboxed. And then we always just like hit the table and we like hit the pen. And you just hit the you know, like pens or hi hat and you have a, you, you know, everybody knows what I'm talking about. Like you just made a beat. And I would do that in class all the time. Like I was one of those kids that everybody hated when I was like in like in middle school, just making a beat for no reason. And and then my brother actually got FL8. Um, but I, I don't remember anything. He never showed me that he was making beats, but he actually was making beats. And and then so skip forward to all that. I was still listening to like my my upbringing, like for my brother. It was like everything in the 90s because my brother was like born in the 90s. And he grew up in the 90s. So I used to listen to, like, my favorite artists of all time is still DJ Quick. And I used to listen to DJ Quick, Nate Dogg, Warren G, uh, Snoop Dogg, like, Dre, like, everybody, NWA. Like, I used to listen to all that, like, all 90s hip-hop, you know, like, and, and I listened to all that. And then that was, like, the only thing I really knew until my friend was like, damn, are you still listening to the 90 hip-hop rappers? And I was like, I was like, yeah, I was in high school. I was my freshman year in high school. And he's like, He's like, man, let me put you on to some underground, like underground SoundCloud. And I was like, what the, what is SoundCloud? I don't even know what that was. Like I've heard it when I was like eighth grade maybe, but I like, never went on there. And then I go, I, he's put me on to, the first person he ever put me on to was, um, was Xavier Wolf. I started listening to Xavier Wolf and then like, I was like, damn, like his beats are so sick. Like they were dark. So I liked, I guess I liked a lot of dark beats back then. Like, and back then he was Ethel Wolf. So all his stuff was just dark. Like he just made dark trap beats pretty much. And then like Trill Funk is what the downer was called. And then after Xavier Wolf, I, I kept listening to him for like four months. And all I told my, I tell my friend like, yo, have you heard this song? Have you heard this song? He's like, dude, I've heard every Xavier Wolf song. And then I was like, like, come put me on to someone, another artist, like who, who else do you know? And then he's like, he showed me Chris Travis. And, and I, so, so they're already boy, you know, like, you know, we got, uh, Hol we got hollow squad and then we got water boys. So then I was like, damn, like, I don't even know they were together. I don't know why I never put it together that like, Xero Wolf on YouTube. And then you saw like the suggested and it was like, all, it was literally Bones, Chris Travis, Eddie Baker. And I was like, I don't know why I never put all of them together. But at that, that was at the time. I didn't know. And my friend put me on the Chris Travis. And then I just started, started bumping Chris Travis and Xero Wolf. That's all I knew. And then, and then when I got into like sort of the end, my second semester of freshman year, he put me on to uh, Ramirez. But during I was, but as I was listening to uh, Xavier Wolf and Chris Travis, I, f I discovered Bones during that time too because they were all boys. Team Stash Hollow Water Boys. I saw like a Team Stash Hollow Water Boy thing, and I was like, "Wait, Hollow? I know that." And then I know Water Boys. I was like, "What is Team Stash?" 
And I was like, so I listened to him and I was like, wow, like he's actually, all right. Now I think for me, it's like Xavier Wolf then Bones as in the order, I think. But Bones and Xavier Wolf can switch trade in and out. But anyways, for me, I started listening to all of them. Like literally I was just a SoundCloud head. Like, I used to listen to just Xavier Wolf, all the team sesh, Hollow Water Boys. And then my friend put me on to Ramirez. My first ever song from Ramirez was called Captain Levi. That was my first song I ever heard of him. And I was like five years old. Um, uh, and and that's that song, like when I heard it, I was like, dang, like the beats are so sick. And then he put me on to another one called uh, Android 18. It's like a, like a minute and a half song, but it's it was like so catchy. So I li- I, that's all I listened to. And then I think like, Someone told me, my friend that was showing me all those, all those, all those songs. Someone told me that he made beats, and I was like, "Wait, you told me all these songs, but you never told me you know how to make beats." And he's like, "Yeah." He's like, "I could teach you." And I was like, "All right." So he came to my house, and then he's like, "He's like, you got a laptop?" I was like, "Yeah, I got like this trash HP laptop that my mom gave me." And then he's like, "All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you how to how to get FL Studio." And I was like. I was like, what is that? He's like, oh, and it, I was like, what's FL Studio? And he's like, Fruity Loops. I was like, oh, my brother had Fruity Loops. You know, like, cause that's when I knew about Fru- Fruity Loops 8. And I was like, that's that's still going around? He's like, yeah. And then, so he went on Pirate Bay, you know, downloaded it for me um, on my laptop. And then I was like, damn, you can get shit for free? Like, I literally didn't know anything about this till like, my friend put me on to everything. So I was giving my friend, like, props. His name's Jesus, or Sukumo, that's his producer name. And, like, he he showed me how to make, like, he didn't show me how to make beats because he told me like he didn't want he didn't want me to like just learn it right away. He wanted me to like, actually learn, not just show me where everything goes. And then like so he just kind of put me on a little bit. So he would tell me, yeah, like this, you know, like uh, he would tell me where the snare goes. But after I, after I would try a trial and error, you know, like I would like, ah, oh, sounds good there. But then he'd be like, no, because the the beat isn't. Uh, when I would actually play the beat to like a sample, because he would always give me he would make my melodies for me because he was really good. So he made all my melodies and then I always do the drums. That's how he taught me. And every time my snare like was off and he was like, no, dude, it's always goes in the same spot. I thought you changed it every time, but it's literally just a pattern. At the time, I didn't know that it goes in the same spot. I thought you have to change it. I don't know. So um, he would tell me where the snare goes. Anyways, that's how I made, that's how I started making beats. He showed me how to, he gave me FL and then he cracked like Omnisphere or Nexus for me and it was like over. I just started making beats like all day. And then I got into... Uh, my brother was like, you should make some DJ Quick type beats. And I was like, what? And he's like, yeah, just like sample old songs. And I was like, all right. So then I just started sampling. That's why I started sampling. And then um, there goes like the beat making part. And so to, to end it off, I just started making beats. I was just pre- beat maker. I didn't think I would ever engineer. I didn't think I'd ever record anybody. And so my, I had another friend from high school. He's like, I want to be a rapper. And then honestly, the... After he started rapping and I was recording, I was like, after he, he recorded on one of my beats and I was like, I, I, I love this. I love this feeling to hear my beat and someone rap over it. I never heard of my life. And I was like, damn, like I could actually hear it on the radio at that time. Like now I, I'm thinking about it. Like that song was ass. Like it, there's no way no one was going to listen to that on the radio. But to me, on my head, I was like, dang, I bet like this could blow up on SoundCloud because that's all I knew was SoundCloud. And then I was just like, damn, I love recording. I, I, I like it. And then I started engineering. Like on YouTube, I, w- I watched YouTube videos on how to like mix on FL and like everybody does like the, 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 the fish technique where they go through and they fish all the frequencies and they pull it down. You have that little skinny frequency and you pull down like seven and like negative seven and like eight different spots. And it was like, na- like now I didn't know that, that that was like the worst way to do it until I went. And then I was like, and I started looking at how to go to school because I didn't want to go to college. But I, at that point, when after he wrapped on my beat, I was like, this, I know I want to do this as my career. That's why I chose to do music. You know, that's why we are now because I, I, at that moment I knew this is what I wanted to do. So then I just pursued it. And then I looked up a school. Uh, the reason why I didn't go, cause I'm from LA, not from LA, but I'm near LA. I go, I lived, I lived in Pomona my whole life. Um, there's like only one school that was like called the LA recording school. And the reason why I didn't go there was because I, it was like, it was really, it was more expensive than our school. And it was only for a year. It was like 50K for like one year. So like our school was like two years and ours was like not even that much even. You know, I mean, it was almost there. But like for two years, I'm getting more education. And you only get a diploma. You only get a diploma for 50K. And I was like, I'm not getting a degree for the same amount. Almost, you know, maybe even less. So and then um, I came up, I came up school here in the Bay. 
And and I just came here f- thinking like I just want to like really enhance on engineering and really make the most out of what I can here at school and then elevate myself, you know, at, at, at my house, at, like in my own time. But that's why I chose the music industry was because of my friend rapped over my beat. And I was like, damn, this is what I want to do. I want to make beats and have people rap over my beats. And I want to engineer and mix the songs. And I want to become a producer engineer, just like DJ Quick. So it all came like full circle when I was eight years old, listening to DJ Quick and making making the same beats he made, like on my, the same beats he would make, I'd make them like with my hands or my pen. And like, it just, it's crazy. Full circle. It literally started off, my brother told me DJ Quick to now me kind of sort of living like DJ Quick. You know, like, I didn't know, I'm not doing coke or anything, but like, you know, I'm, you know, I'm making beats and engineering. So it's kind of the same, same thing for me. Fun fact. Uh, the way me and Esfa met is when I moved here, my original plan was to go to, uh, uh, like venues and like concerts and link up with everyone I could. That's what I did down in Florida. And then when I got here, I got a job at Chipotle and I met him and SoundCloud was like a really big part of why I started making beats. I forgot to mention, like, that's how I I met, like, or how I found out about a, like a ton of artists. And, um, and so, yeah, like once, once I linked up with him and he was telling me about how he knew people on SoundCloud, like he listened to that a lot. Like none of my friends back in Florida, like fucked with SoundCloud rappers or artists like that. So I was like, I was like, okay, like that's like really, I think like what we talked about a lot when we first like linked up, but yeah. Forgot to say that was that was a huge inspiration with SoundCloud. Like you could just the fact that anyone and everyone could be on there, like it's crazy to me. Yeah, I think it changed a lot from when it was back then. I feel like back then people put it for the love. Now people are putting it because they're like, oh, yo, check me out, check my song out on SoundCloud. You know, like it's not the same as back then. I don't know to me at least. But then again, I'm not really on it like I was back then. I would DM like 30 kids a day. I keep saying kids, but I, I would thir- DM like 30 people a day trying to like get someone to rap on my beat. I really wanted someone to just keep rapping on my beats. So that's like, and like a few people hit me up and that was send it out and they wouldn't rap on it. And that's when I was like, oh, these, some of these people aren't really serious. So that's why I was like, uh, I only had like three people actually rap on my beat and none of them were good, but it's all right. You win some, you lose some, you know? So for the next, for the, the, the you know what I'm saying? Eli, you feel me? You win some, you lose some? Preaching? Sometimes, sometimes, Phil. Sometimes it's all dubs. I don't know. It's all wins over here. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. So I want to go into like what motivates us. You know, like what's a, what motivates us and what do you think people, how do you think can, how do you think we can give help to other people who like are lacking motivation? So we'll start off with, again with Vic. I'm supposed to say, like, something that motivates me. I kind of said it in the last one. I kind of said it already, but I'll say it again. Kind of like trying to make it a full-on career without having to, like, look back at it and, like, to have a full-on, very successful thing, either in music or maybe in film or even just, like, at a computer or something company, like, or maybe even games. But, like, to do something and, like, to be proud of my work and, like, the ultimate goal for music, of course, would be to get, like, a Grammy or something big like that. I mean, honestly, like, it's very, like, especially nowadays on the internet, it's very possible. And we all know people who, like, you know, are close or, like, we do know people who have blown up or, like, or around people who have or we work with people who have. And it's, like, it's nothing really special. It's just, like, if you're in it and like you do it you're consistent sometimes it takes a little bit of luck yeah but sometimes you know like if you're good like like everyone knows what a good song is everyone knows what you know sounds good sounds bad and if if you you have the right person you guys are all working together you know you can achieve many things and the ultimate goal would be like you know a success and it's not always money but it's an overall success in yourself i guess that's very good Vic. Vic is a man of many words, but also a man of very little words and many analogies. Yo, 
the metaphor god i'm saying all right uh, Eli, go ahead. Uh, man i think like being able to like i think yeah well vic said pretty much be able to do this forever i mean i, I think i want to be around music not always in the production of it necessarily um you know uh, i've talked about like discovering people before like trying to do like a and r work um you know that's what like got me excited in high school would be like oh i heard like this person that had like 50 plays on soundcloud or you know 200 plays thirty thousand plays whatever something something that's not like you know not to say like if you get plays, you know, not not knocking anything. I don't get plays. I don't get plays like that. I get plays on when I get you know beat placements sometimes. But like, I don't get plays on like if I would just put a beat on SoundCloud, maybe a hundred or something like that. But that's just from people clicking it. What I'm saying is, um, it's fun when you hear someone new and you're like, yo, like you can tell they're really into it because it's, you know they maybe just started or they're like they just got their first tape out or whatever maybe and they're like always promoting it they're like super into it and those are the people especially if they're in your area those are the people who you want to work with because you know you'll see how it goes if you know you're getting into this or like for people who are already into it um you know well they call it a game for a reason i mean it is a game and some people like to play it um play it like you know some people like to play it a little differently i was like yo yo no i'm saying i was trying i was trying to say something like like i don't know i was trying to be like big i was trying to, i was trying to jump a trying to jump an analogy but it wasn't hitting right there but no what i'm saying is yeah i keep seeing some move on on s phone's wall yo i see that too i i just didn't want to i just didn't want to say it i swear to god like like on his top like left area, right? Right one, the bright one, yeah. To to yeah, your right, to I your right. On, yeah. Yeah, I keep on thinking like Jordan or something, like in there, like his girlfriend's in the background. Is, yeah. Are they doing? Are they doing work? Are people walking by? Nah, no one's walking by. It's just like I don't even know. I'm not gonna make an excuse. I've seen like three times. I've seen like three times. Anyways, anyways, um, yeah, like new sound, like uh, that's what like like I was talking about in the in the last one, um. Really got me going with Aaron. Uh, oh, yo, yo, I dropped the government. Yo, I can't say who it is now, but one of my artists um, went out and worked with a bunch. Uh, uh, it, it, it really just like it, it, it got me like in the mood to like engineer all the time. And like I wanted to find out like, oh, what's the new plugin? What's this the best for? What's, you know, like where, where's the sauce? You know, like, you know, that's when we really got into it um, when we started getting sessions and. Um, finding new people, meeting new people, uh, connecting, like don't stop connecting with people. Um, when you start connecting with people, I swear it doesn't stop. Like I'll get followers from people who are like all following the people who I just met. And I'm like, Oh, so they must know them. So they're trying to, you know, and that's just how it works. You're not always going to work, but it's just like good to have mutuals in, um, in this line of work in this industry, music or entertainment, whatever it is, you know, film, all that stuff, gaming, um, school especially like going to school for something that you like is motivating um you know like i think i think i'm really interested in in like kind of the background side of all this though like like i was saying like a and r and like all that stuff um that's what motivates me i guess to wrap it up just like the new, not to sound cliche, because everyone's like, oh, you know, like we're trying to like bring in the new sound or like the new way, you know, this is this is it. Like, it's not necessarily what's the new sound, but um, just always being around what's popping. Like you see all these people like Coach K, um, uh, you know, like Gucci now, Gucci sending like all the new 1017 people. If you're on his page, if you go on his Instagram, he's posting all his new artists who he's signing out of the South, pretty, pretty like pretty much out of the South, I'm, I'm assuming it's going to be. Um, but stuff like that, just like always being around um, and having opportunities, I guess. It's very good. All right, Jordan, we've got about eight minutes left on the call. Do you want to give about two to three minutes of uh, input about what motivates you, my good sir? Um, probably ties me back to the last uh, thing about coming up on music. Um, just pretty much like, I'm liking, I'm, I could see myself leveling up 
as far as like making beats, like I see myself getting better and better. So that's just like huge motivation, like, um, to push me forward. And also the fact that, uh, like now I got an artist that like, I'm a fan of that. I'm like making an album with. So it's like, it's like, I feel like I'm in a really good headspace right now for it. Um, to just like keep, keep working. Uh, and then also it's like, yeah, like I said, like the fact that I don't go to school. So it's like, I better put my head to something. Cause like nothing's guaranteed. Like I don't have, I literally have skills to show for, but I don't have that on paper. Like I couldn't hand that into somebody like I'd have to show you. Um, so it's like, that, I think that's like a big, big, like fear that keeps me going. Like, okay, like keep working because <laughs> what else you going to do? You have to restart somewhere else if, if this ain't for you. Um, but yeah, those, those are two big motivational factors for me. And then also what Eli said, like how, like you take, you take these people that were coming up and like they got successful and now they're signing people to them, uh, to themselves. And I think that's like, like crazy to me. Like I, I want to be able to like sign other producers, like, you know, sign artists and like create somewhat of a label, just like, you know, internet money or like 808 mafia is doing. Like, I think that's just insane to me. So I definitely want to get to that point. Um, definitely trying to get achievements like uh, Vic was saying, like going for Grammys um, and like just just doing like crazy stuff that I know like my high school stuff or my high school self like would not like believe at all that I was doing, um, which I feel like right now, like my high school self would not believe like how far I've come like making what I make because I mean how we all started out making trash like to now it's like it's just a crazy journey but yeah I mean that's that's just what keeps me going too and working on other stuff like eventually you're gonna pick up engineering but even like working in Photoshop right now it's like it's fun for me so and like learning about the music business like I'd say like I'm I'm interested in to the business side of things so I think for music, there's just like a whole lot of outlets you have, you know, to be a part of whether you're an A&R, a manager, business manager, and a, uh, a music lawyer, like a producer, artist, engineer, like you can literally be all those things, you know? So it's just like, I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of objectives to tackle and, you know, it's fun to get to those. So yeah, that's what keeps me motivated. Very good. Jordan? For me personally, I'd like to say my first thing that motivates me is uh, all the sacrifices that I've made. I feel like uh, there's a lot that I've sacrificed that I cannot fail. Like, I just can't fail. Like, if this doesn't work for me, like, I don't know. I, I don't want to make it seem like I'm, I'm a disappointment. But, like, I like I feel like, I, I feel like I've sacrificed so much that and worked so hard that I feel like there's no way that we're not going up. You know what I'm saying? Like. There's no way. Like I, I've just sacrificed. I've left like my family. Like I don't see them at all. You know, like they're and and like I'm Latin. You know, so we're all close. Mexicans are a very close family. You know, tight knit family, as Vic would know. And so, like in leaving for like two years, I see them like here, here and there. Like don't get me wrong, and I'm saying I never see them, but I don't really see them that much. So I feel like that's my number one thing that motivates me is like my family for sure, and like all I've sacrificed to be here. And I think another thing is like the future, you know,